contracts with arbitration clauses. This is something to help you when dealing with communicating with the courts and with the opposing parties who want to challenge the validity of your contracts. As mentioned, we were the first to take a contract, convert it to a trust agreement, and to add an arbitration clause to that agreement, to our knowledge. By doing so, this, when you add an arbitration agreement that gives the arbitrator exclusive jurisdiction, takes it out of the hands of the courts. The courts have been reluctant to respect the law. Now, mind you, this particular one is talking about an individual. Let's say, can you force an individual into a contract only if they have an obligation? To the contract. Now, let's show you what we mean by obligation. We're going to go to 29 USC. Now, this is talking about employers. Now, this says that an employer, if the employer may by regulation exclude the group or class of employers described in the preceding sentence from the application of this section, if the corporation determines that such exclusive or exclusion is necessary. Now, can the corporation or the other party opt out of the agreement? Well, let's go. We're going to go up to. In the case of a plan terminated by mass withdrawal within the meaning of this section of this title, paragraph two shall be applied, substituting three for five years in a paragraph. Ladies and gentlemen, this document is only talking about the withdrawal from plans, complete withdrawal. This gives from in plans that involve employers. This gives them all of the different facets for which the employer can do a complete withdrawal. I'm actually going to click on complete withdrawal to let you see. This is called opting out. Okay. The term complete withdrawal means the complete withdrawal described in section 1383 of this title. Okay. Yeah. So they give a definition, but don't give the definition. That's interesting, ain't it? That's what Congress does. Because this is the session we're in. So this is what it was supposed to be telling us about for this session. Want to do something? Control F. We pull that up and we go O-P-T, O-U-T. So I put in both opt out and it says, no, you cannot keep the word together. You got to separate it. And so now I separated it. And give me one second. I know it's here because I've already looked it up here for the term opt out. And basically what it says is that, yes, they can opt out if they so choose, but it has to be within the period for which they were to opt out. And then it talks about what constitutes a full withdrawal and a full op opting out of the agreement. Okay. But yes, a person has the author ability to opt out of an agreement if they have an obligation to the agreement. And if the provisions of the agreement permit, in other words, statute of limitation, there must be a statute of limitations. So let's go here. The one before. Then I will give you an understanding as to why we're bringing this information to your attention. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, this case right here, it says that we're dealing with the laws governing a trust. Okay, and in Oh, went back too far. Sorry. One second. In dealing with laws governing a trust. No, see, this is the one we did before. So now it's going to take some time to get back to where we need to. Uh, this is where we were doing research on the clerks of the court failing to file your documents on time. But this one is dealing with the laws associated with trusts. And the laws governing in the trust is the grantor's uh, intentions. However, you'll find here what they're talking about, departure from doctrine. Previously, are presumably revocable under the then governing departure form document. Govern this is an opt-out form. That's all that means. Collective governmental structure. Then you have governing departure form document. Governing departure form document saying, bye bye, we don't want to be here anymore. I'm leaving the company. And because of that, they have the right to opt out. But 
it says to establish and express trust in favor of whomever it is. Then they talk about why they established this express trust. Now, there are some reasons that explain why the language in the express trust must say what it says, but you will find out the following, and we should be letting you know this. Those of you who received an adverse judgment from the court, grab your document and go back to the court. Tell them you need them to do a reconsideration of your matter. Tell them the court failed to address the trust aspects of the communication, trust aspects of the contracts between the parties. The parties had a contract, and if you look, like I said, my contracts that I did the templates for included a trust section where it talked about the trust section and who the trustees were and what their responsibilities were. It documents that there is a prior relationship, all of the elements that a contract is required supposed to have. So, ladies and gentlemen, those of you who have had adverse decisions by the court respecting your arbitration clause and arbitration agreements, go back in on a motion for reconsideration and tell the court that they did not look at this case the way it was supposed to be observed in law, that this is a matter involving a trust and that this court was supposed to rule in that capacity as someone who can speak on trust agreements. So that's what I would suggest to those of you because I do believe that that will help you greatly. Remember, these are trust agreements, and if they're trust agreements, then the court cannot just simply treat you as if you're some litigant. Do you have to provide them this and provide? No, because you're under trust law. The reason why you're receiving this information, the reason why I'm talking about it is because trusts fall under equity, not under civil. So that means they have to take you into equity. Equity cannot aid the wronging of someone, nor can it aid a wrongdoer. Equity is where you want to be. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for taking your time and taking my time and understanding time. And we're going to ask that you have a very good day. Goodbye.